Hello again. Um, it's always a little bit bittersweet when you finish a book. That means that there's a sad part to it and a happy part to it because you finish a book and you're like, oh yay, I finished the book and I finally got to find out what happened. But there's also the sad part of, man, I finished that book. It's all done. Now what am I going to read? <laughs> and you kind of maybe feel a little bit sad that your book is over. Yeah, that's how I feel sometimes at least. But I have some questions for you and I want you to think about them. And I really want you to journal about them or send them your answers to me somehow by email or on Dojo. The first thing I want you to think about is a quote that Miss Granger said in her letter. It said, okay, in her letter to Nick, which he opens years later, after he's in college, Mrs. Granger says, listen carefully, a person can watch the sunset, but he cannot slow it down or stop it or make it go backward. What do you think this observation has to do with Nick's word? So think about that saying. She says, you can watch the sunset, but you can't slow it down and you can't make it go backwards. So what does that have to do with Nick's word. When I think about a sunset, I think of, well, something very beautiful. And I'm, I'm sitting there maybe in my backyard and I'm watching it happen and the sun's going down. I have no control over it. It's gonna go down and I can't slow it down. I can't stop it. I definitely can't make it go backward and rise back up right then. And I'm wondering what you think that means with relation to his word, frindle. So when he invented his word frindle, do you think that he could, it created a lot of excitement and it's beautiful, just like a sunset, right? A sunset creates excitement. His new word created excitement. And it says you can't slow it down and you can't make it go backwards. So could he go backwards in time? No. Could he slow down the excitement? I mean, maybe, but everybody was excited and he can't control how other people think. So I want you to think about that. I want you to think about the comparison between the sunset happening and how you can't control that and how the excitement about the word frindle, it's almost like Nick couldn't control that either. So I want you to think about that and I want you to write about that. Um, the next thing I want you to think about and this is going to be kind of fun, and it's going to include family members. Um, <laughs> I want you to think, so he, Nick remembered the word guagala. Remember that? He would call guagala was what he called music when he was a baby. Now, I know all of you said lots of really cute things when you were babies, right? Um, I, I think a lot of you probably said spaghetti in very interesting ways that wasn't spaghetti. <laughs> So I want you to maybe ask a family member if there are any unique words that you said when you were little that to you it was the word and to your family it was the word and that's how you said it and that's how you always said it. And then eventually you actually realized, you know, when you got older, maybe how you should properly say it. But I want you to share that with me and um, you can email it to me or send me a dojo message, but just something kind of fun to think about. Okay, there's a lot of cool things we can do with this book. All right, well, don't forget, you're going to think about how the excitement with the word frindle is like a sunset. And then I want you to ask your family members some of the cute words that you used to say when you were young. And to you, they had a meaning. All right, have fun. Have a great day. Bye. Miss ya.